Bhagavad Gita, verse 4.9 O Arjuna, my birth and activities are transcendental. One who knows this in truth does not take another birth after giving up the present body. Rather, he assuredly attains me. Sar Ardhavashini One will only become perfectly successful when he has understood the essence of the transcendental nature of my birth and activities, which are endowed with the characteristics described in the previous verses. This verse, beginning with the word Janma, is spoken to explain this. Sripad Ramanuj Acharya and Sripad Madhusudan Saraswati explain that the word Divya means non-material or transcendental, Aprakrita. And Srila Sridhar Swami has translated it as Alokika, not of this material world. The material world, Loka, is created by material nature. Therefore, the word Alokika means not of this material world. Srila Sridhar Swami Pada also implies that Bhagavan's birth and activities are non-material or aprakrita. Literally, a means not and prakrita means of material nature. Consequently, because the birth and activities of Sri Bhagavan are aprakrita and beyond the modes of nature, they are eternal. In the Bhagavad Sandarbha, Srila Jiva Goswami refers to this subject in his explanation of the verse Na Vidyati Yasya Cha Janma Karma Va. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has no material birth or activities. Srimad Bhagavatam 8.3.8 .8. He explains that although this matter cannot be reconciled by logic, it must be accepted on the strength of statements from the Vedas and from the Smritis, even though it is beyond reason and argument. In this regard, it is also said in the Purusha Bodhini Shruti of Pipalanda Shakara, Ekudevo Nitya Lila Nurakto Bhaktariti Antar Atma. Eternally engaging in his own pastimes, the one Lord in his form as the indwelling witness of all enters within the hearts of his devotees. Regarding the eternality of Sri Bhagavan's birth and activities, detailed descriptions have been given in various places in the Nectarian Srimad Bhagavatam. After hearing my statements such as Yo Veti Tadvattaha, Gita 4.9, Agyo Pisan Avyayatma, Gita 4.6, and Janma Karma Jami Divyam, Gita 4.9, one who understands the eternal nature of my birth and activities with theistic intelligence, not depending on empiric knowledge, does not have to take birth again in this material world. There is a Gita statement, 17.23, Om Tat Sat Iti Nirdesho Brahmanas Trividaha Smritaha. The Vedas and Yajyas were originally created from these three words, Om Tat Sat, of the Brahmanas. They, who understand the word Tat in this statement to mean Brahma, the Supreme, do not have to take birth again after giving up their present body. Rather, it is assured that they attain me. Here, a superior meaning is attributed to the phrase giving up the body. Such a person does not take another birth after quitting the body. Instead, he attains me even without giving it up. Sripad Ramanuj Acharya writes, Paraphrasing Sri Krishna. True knowledge of my transcendental birth and activities 
completely destroy all sins that impede one on the path to attaining my full shelter. Only those dear devotees who have taken shelter of me attain me, even in this very life. Sar Ardavarshini Prakashikariti, they who, by the grace of the spiritual master and the Vaishnavas, realize that Sri Bhagavan takes a transcendental birth and performs transcendental activities through the medium of his potency of inconceivability or Ajintya Shakti, attain eternal service to him in this very life by the mercy of his pleasure-giving potency, the Ladini Shakti. On the contrary, they who consider the birth and activities of Sri Krishna to be mundane are overpowered by ignorance. They wander in the cycle of birth and death, afflicted by the threefold miseries. Lord Brahma has also said in Srimad Bhagavatam 2.7.29 Tat karma divyam iva The activities of Sri Bhagavan are indeed divine. Srila Vishwana Chakvarti Thakur has clarified this point in his Bhagavatam commentary on this verse. In reality, all of Sri Krishna's activities are transcendental. Furthermore, it is stated, Na vidyate yasya cha janma karma va, na nama rupa guna dosha eva va, tatapi loka pyaya sambhavaya yaha, svamayaya tani anukalam rijati. Srimad Bhagavatam 8.3.8 for the Supreme Lord, there is no birth, action, name, form, qualities, fault, and so forth. Nonetheless, he perpetually accepts these attributes by his transcendental potency for the creation and destruction of the material world. The explanation of the above verse by Srila Jiva Goswami is significant and can be referred to in his Bhagavad Sandarbha and Grama Sandarbha. The Shrutis have described Bhagavan as devoid of a fruitive mentality, Nishpala, inactive, Nishkriya, without material contamination, or faultless, Niranjana, formless, Nirakara, indescribable, Ashabda, imperishable, Avyaya, and so forth. It is stated like this, because he is beyond material qualities. Thus, in specific shrutis such as the Chandokya Upanishad 3.14.4, he is called Sarva Karma. He who performs all activities, Sarva Karma. He who has all types of desires, Sarva Ganda. He from whom all fragrance emanates, Sarva Rasa. He who embodies all transcendental mellows, and so on. This is corroborated in Srimad Bhagavatam 6.4.33. Yo nukrahartam bhajatam padamulam anama rupo bhagavan anantaha namani rupanija janmakarma bir bejasa mayam paramaha pasitatu to bestow mercy upon those who worship his lotus feet, Bhagavan, though free from material names, forms and other attributes, accepts various transcendental forms and names through his different incarnations and activities. May that unlimited Lord, whose opulence is inconceivable, be pleased with me. They, who are Bhagavan's devotees, Achieve him even while living within this body. Krishna says, Yantimam eva nirgunaha, they who are free from the modes attain me. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.25.22. While commenting on this verse, Srila Vishwana Chakavarti Thakur writes that the word laya, dissolution, is not mentioned here. This clarifies Krishna's point. Upon becoming transcendental, 
my devotees attain me even in their present body.